everyone here tonight to the June 14th, 2023 meeting of the Great Neck Public Schools Board of Education. Two weeks ago on May 31st, our board recognized Dr. Teresa Prendergast for her eight years of caring and attentive service to our entire school community in every one of its facets and for her graciousness, her goodwill, her cheer. Just a week ago, she suffered a grave medical incident and as we sit here this evening with her empty seat by my side, I am reminded, as I am sure we all are, of the fragility of life. Every life is precious. And as Maya Angelou has said, had said, people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And I think it can be said of Dr. Prendergast that she made us all feel seen and heard and recognized. And her absence is deeply felt. I am sure that all of us here in this room have had individual experiences with Dr. Prendergast. And I ask now for a minute of silence as we each recall her with affection and as we extend our most heartfelt sympathies to the Prendergast family. And as I believe the board knows she would have expected us to do, we continue the district's work. We continue to honor her legacy in the work of our faculty, the lives of our students, and the importance of this community to Dr. Prendergast. Lord knows she spent more time here than she did with her own family. And so we will continue now with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So this year, um, our shared decision-making committee reports were rescheduled. And I know we're grateful that so many of you were able to reschedule your lives in order to be able to come here this evening on, on a rescheduled date to present the work of your committees and the goals that you set and how you achieved them. 
So without further ado, um, we're going to turn now to the shared decision-making committee reports. Dr. Lando. Good evening. Uh, it, it is my pleasure to first welcome the, the principal or the representatives from Parkville Pre-K and Kindergarten Center, the primary center, to the podium, uh, to the microphone, to present their report. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Um, good evening. Um, that was a tough act to follow. Um, but thank you all, um, President Sasuni, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Lando, Central Office Administrators, and fellow Shared Decision Making Committee members. Um, I also want to take this brief moment to just briefly thank Ms. Bell um, for her unwavering support of our committee, um, her help, her constant guidance um, to execute and organize our goals in a meaningful way um, that worked best not only for Parkville School, um, but also for the greater Great Neck community. Um, our main goal this year um, was to continue our goal from last year, which was doing um, game days and un unplugged to reconnect nights. Um, we continue to partnership with our BCG committee um, to give families the opportunity to connect at home. Um, we would encourage and support um, this important goal every one night a month, um, and we would call it Unplugged to Reconnect Night, um, a school-wide event that had one focus, which was togetherness. Um, the only assignment was for families to come together um, and have some fun. Um, this year we kicked it off with a book called The Family Book by Todd Parr. Different members of our committee got together and recorded the book, um, played it for students not only in school, um, but at home as well. Um, the family book celebrates the love we feel for our families um, and all the different varieties they come in. Um, other unplugged reconnect nights um, went along with school-wide events like um, a, park, a park family fun night, our Parkville picnic, our pajama story night. Um, when unplugged to reconnect night wasn't on the same night as a school-wide function, um, students learned to play a new game during Parkville game days. Um, we use these game days to promote the social emotional learning um, that comes along with playing a game, taking turns, winning and losing, playing fair and having good sportsmanship. Um, we taught Go Fish and Alphabet Edition um, and it was really riveting in our school to see how many different ways students came up with different ways to play the game, um, matching pictures, lowercase letters, uppercase letters, and it was nice to see them um, be able to be spontaneous and feel safe enough to take risks, not only with each other, um, but with the different partnerships we had in our gym where we host um, these game day events. We did a memory game, Let's Go Fishing. Um, families were encouraged on these nights to unplug and reconnect, to either play the game that we played in school or connect in some other way um, together. Um, we continue to believe that playing games promotes family time, builds communication skills, um, teaches following directions and instructions, helps children learn to win and lose, improves their math skills, encourages problem solving, um, amongst many other things. Um, our second goal, in addition to the game days or tying it in, was building our connections with our community. Um, we partnered with two schools in the district. One was the Baker School, um, and the other was uh, Great Neck South Middle. Um, when we partnered with Baker, we set up a buddy system between the Baker fifth graders and the Parkville pre-K students. They came prior to um, our first game day. They uh, initiated the game with the students. They got to know each other. Um, they played little getting to know each other games. Um, our buddies then returned on Tuesday uh, last week uh, for a spring play date. They read a book together. They had a snack. They played in the playground. And it was really something that um, built the partnerships and kind of connected Parkville to the greater community, sometimes where not always as close. <laughs> um, Log logistically. Um, and then again with Great Neck South Middle, they came prior to um, our memory game day and, and went into each of the kindergarten classes. Um, and it was really beneficial. We worked really hard. I don't know where, is Patricia here? Oh, oh. There she is. Um, Patricia, we worked really hard to uh, build a partnership between their goal and our goal. They talked about integrity. They went into each kindergarten classroom. They did a lot of role playing situations with the students. Um, and it was something that the kindergarten teacher said, I wish we could do this every week. Um, but a lot of work and planning went into that. 
Um, but we definitely look forward to, you know, these partnerships and continuing to build them in the future. So thank you so much. <laughs> And next up for our shared decision-making reports uh, under Principal Emily Zucal, we have Lakeville Elementary School. Good evening, President Sassuni, members of the Board of Education, and Dr. Lando, uh, Central Office Administrators, and fellow Share Decision-Making Committee members. Um, I'd also like to start by thanking Ms. Zucal and Ms. Rudito for their constant support of the committee and all of the members of our committee for their hard work and dedication. They really are wonderful. Um, <clears throat> I'll try to keep this to the five minutes you guys asked. Uh, <laughs> this year was definitely a productive year for our Share Decision-Making Committee at Lakeville. Um, we had three goals that we worked on, and I'll uh, briefly touch on both on all of those. Um, the first goal was a continuation from last year, a Humans of Lakeville project, we called it. Um, we started this last year. It was fashioned after the Humans of New York uh, blog, and uh, it, uh, fifth graders last year came up with questions um, that were emailed to support staff members in the building who they don't usually get to speak with or know, um, and to get to know them better. Um, we decided to expand upon this uh, this year. Uh, our goal always is to get students as involved as possible in everything that we do. So we ask that students um, come up again with questions to speak uh, to ask the support staff members, but this time to interview them themselves, to invite them into their classrooms, to learn about them. They made invitations, they made welcome signs, they gave them tours of the classroom, they told them what their answers would be to the questions. It was very adorable, and it was really nice. It really made our school, which is already such a close community, feel even closer when they walk in the hallways now and they see a support staff member that was welcomed into their classroom. They say hello, they learned more about all the the hardworking people that make Lakeville run the way it does, which they didn't necessarily realize before. Um, we took uh, notes and interview and recorded the interviews. The students were very active in all of this, and all of the um, interview questions and answers, as well as pictures, are going to be displayed for the beginning of the year for people to come in and really recognize all the hardworking people at Lakeville. Um, another project was a beautification project. Um, there was a, there's a wall uh, where children play that is kind of bare, and some of the parents had brought up that that would be a nice space to beautify, for lack of a better word. And so we got to work and came up with a design, and um, again, was thinking, how can we get students involved? So um, what we decided was there will be, um, the wall will be painted, but then students are gonna take uh, turns actually using um, sponges to put their own little stamp on the wall as well, which is really nice because they're gonna get to actively participate in creating and making this wall more beautiful. There's a beautiful Lakeville Lions design going on as well, um, which I believe there's a picture of in the um, packet that was handed out. Um, also, the, um, the wall is very long, so each year, students are gonna be able to add on. So for years to come, students will participate in this and um, it'll be a really nice project and a really nice memory for all the kids who, got, who get to participate. Um, and our last um, goal was, like last year, we did two community service projects and we thought it was such a wonderful experience, let's do that again. And so um, last year we partnered with the Birthday Wishes organization where uh, they, make, they help um, create birthday parties and get birthday presents to children who are displaced or unhoused. Um, so what we realized or learned from them last year is that while everybody likes to make birthday parties and get gifts for younger children, teenagers are often overlooked. So this year at uh, Lakeville, we decided to make sure that those teenagers get the birthday gifts that they deserve. And so as a school we raised donations we in less than a week we raised $700 which I thought was pretty amazing um, and each class uh, 
is taking part in putting together a, bu a duffel bag full of gifts for these teenagers. And um, it's really been a wonderful process, which again, students are involved in and get to see that um, a small action can make a big impact, which is really, really nice. Um, and those are our three goals. Thank you so much for having us tonight. And uh, it's wonderful to work with this committee. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, uh, under the leadership of Principal Michael, Dr. Michael Grimaldi, is E.M. Baker. Good evening, everyone. My name is Angela Keller. I'm one of the teacher co-chairs for Baker School. This is Megan Way. She is one of the parent co-chairs for our committee. This year, our committee wrote and achieved four goals. Tonight, I will speak to you about our primary goal, which was a continuing goal from last school year. Um, the goal rate reads as follows. The goal of the Ann Baker Shared Decision-Making Committee is to cultivate community connections that foster the habits for life by facilitating a community garden to promote civic engagement, advocacy, and responsibility. The idea of creating a Baker Garden developed in the 2021-22 school year from a conversation focused on the economically diverse community within Great Neck. The committee had strong feelings that providing homegrown foods to families would be a way to help take care of our own community. It was determined that we had a space on school grounds that would be ideal to grow a vegetable garden. Parent members expressed enthusiasm about this initiative and the committee decided to draft a goal and commit to the project. The M. Baker PTO provided funding for the materials for building cement block planters and an irrigation system. Additional funds were donated from parents at our annual plant sale. Through the support of Boy Scout Troop 10, Cub Scout Pack 178, parent volunteers, and parent volunteers, on two separate occasions, one in 2022 and another in 2023, the planters and irrigation systems were designed, blueprints were created, and the planters were built. The district placed fencing surrounding the perimeter of the designated garden area and a shed was purchased by Dr. Grimaldi for storage of gardening tools. Due to the timing of the installation of the first planter, we did not get to plant in the 2021-22 school year. This year, parent members of the committee, together with teachers and students from two fourth grade classrooms, helped to plant seeds, grow seedlings, and transfer the plants into garden planters. Students worked in small groups together with teachers and parents over several days. Some vegetables and herbs that have been planted are snap peas, cilantro, lettuce, kale, basil, radishes, squash, bush beans, eggplants, tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchini, and some marigolds. A second planter identical to the first was constructed in April of this year by the Boy Scout Troop 10. Parent members of the committee have reached out to community members through a WhatsApp chat to get volunteers for summer watering, weeding, and harvesting. They have received an overwhelming response. There have even been some retired members of the community that have offered their time to tend to the garden. On June 2nd, we made our first delivery of lettuce to St. Al's Interfaith Food Pantry on Middle Neck Road. Students will be harvesting more lettuce, snap peas, kale, radishes, and yellow wax beans for our second drop off this Friday. The committee understands that our first year will be a learning experience. We are not sure how much the garden will produce on a week to week basis and our goal is to gain knowledge of how much and when we can distribute food for future planning. The idea of having a farmer's market at Baker has even been discussed. We are looking forward to continuing our work on this goal next school year and the years to come. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> yep, go ahead. Yeah, sure. The E.M. Baker SD MC will develop an ongoing partnership with Parkville School by bringing students together to build community connections through reading and play. A joint partnership between Baker SDMC and Parkville SDMC brought all fifth grade students from Baker to Parkville School on January 13th, 2023 for a day of learning and fun. The Baker students paired up with Parkville pre-K students in the effort for students to build patience, empathy, and develop leadership skills. Our students taught the Parkville students how to play goldfish and had time for buddy reading. There was positive feedback from the students from both schools, teachers, and administrators. It was noted that some of the fifth grade students that struggle 
in social situations were able to show leadership skills when working with the younger students. A second day of collaborative fun has been planned for May 30th, 2023. The fifth graders will read aloud to the pre-K students, engage in a fun activity, enjoy a snack, and have outdoor playtime on the playground. It is the hope of both communities, it is the hope of both committees and schools to continue this partnership and expand this experience and possibly include other grade levels from Baker. Well, I'll just sum up our other two goals. We had um, a third goal that was a Future Vest event that we, it was a week long event that modeled a career day, um, which we haven't gotten feedback yet. It was June 5th through June 9th. So we're waiting to see if that will be a yearly event at Baker School. And also we ran a supply drive, backpack drive, and a head uh, phone drive in coordination with the PTO um, for ch students in need in our building. Thank in addition you. to that, oh, for the Future Festival, we got um, some positive feedback from some classroom teachers. We haven't got the, the full feedback from mm -hmm. everyone, but I did receive some positive feedback. I just want to take a brief moment to thank you everyone for supporting the E.M. Baker SDMC committee, including Dr. Gramadi, Dr. Sweet, and all the parent members and all the teacher members. And also I would like to thank um, Dr. Prendergast for your caring personality, gracious leadership style, and unwavering dedication. We all appreciate your positive impact to the community. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Next up under uh, Principal Lucy Bradley is uh, Saddle Rock School. Good evening, President Sassuni, members of the Board of Education, Central Administration, and fellow shared decision-making members. Thank you so much for having us here this evening to discuss our goals for the 2022-2023 school year. My name is Nicole Cicalone, and this is Heather Miller, and we are the teacher chairs of the Shared Decision-Making Committee over at Saddle Rock. Additionally, we would like to extend our thanks to Ms. Lucy Bradley and Ms. Sarah Goldberg for their unwavering support and guidance in the execution of our goals, as well as the members of our committee over at Saddle Rock for all of their hard work this school year. This school year, we had decided to carry over many of the goals in which we um, addressed last year, and then there were some new goals that we decided to implement this year. One of them being our cultural visits. Over at Saddle Rock, we really strive to embrace the cultural heritage of families in our student community. Um, and we wanted to invite our parents as well as grandparents into the classrooms who were interested just in sharing their lives and their experiences. Um, and this really was just a wonderful opportunity for elders and parents to share their years of wisdom and impart lessons, share anecdotes, um, and form a bond with just an attentive group of children just eager to learn about their culture and their life experiences. Um, students really benefited from this experience. They were able to learn about different countries, different backgrounds, um, and these visits for our family members really brought a lot of happiness and just comfort knowing that they were able to make a difference in our students' lives for just that little moment. Um, we really hope to further this, this experience for next school year as well and exploring additional senior connections for the 2023-2024 school year. Additionally, we decided to again address our UN goal, which was life on land. Each class was scheduled for our in-person experiences at Alley Pond, and they provided a tailored lesson, which was based on our grade level's science curriculum. Kindergarten was visited with animals and their young, first grade insects versus arachnids, awesome amphibians for second grade, endangered species for third grade, fascinating forests for fourth grade, and seasonal adaptations for fifth grade. The students were given opportunities to ask questions as well as being treated to a live animal or insect meet and greet, which was really wonderful. 
Another one of our goals this year was for each grade level to have and continue a service learning project. So I'll briefly go through each grade and their um, experience. Saddle Rock kindergartners teamed up with North Hempstead Animal Shelter and they were able to collect supplies requested by the shelter. In first grade, our first graders collected 330 cans to donate to a local food pantry. Our second graders also teamed up with the birthday wish box and they were able to donate to families who were not able to celebrate their birthdays because of being in safe shelters, hotels, and scattered sites. So they were still able to celebrate their special day. Our Saddle Rock third graders held a pajama drive and they were able to collect 66 pairs of pajamas. Our fourth graders were able to donate winter care kits to our Saddle Rock's winter clothing drive. They were able to donate about 80 kits, which included a little extra message to the community members. Our fifth graders celebrated their 12th anniversary with connecting with the Ronald McDonald's House and their readathon. Our fifth graders were actually able to visit the Ronald McDonald's House and they raised about $6,210 for the house. And additionally, one of our goals this year was to update our character education hallway. And our committee really wanted to collectively utilize this space to highlight our Saddle Rock rules for living. At Saddle Rock, our rules for living are, we take care of ourselves, we take care of each other, we take care of our environment, and we always try our best. This year, our fifth graders designed six by six tiles to showcase their vision of the first rule, we take care of ourselves. Some of the messages included relax, take time, love yourself. The tiles came out really beautiful. They were actually installed today, which was very fitting. And we can't wait for the next four years for each graduating fifth grade class to be able to represent their role. Thank you so much for allowing us to share our initiatives for this school year. It's been an honor. I agree that the tiles are beautiful. Ms. Bradley showed them off to me today when I was over at uh, Saddle Rock. So uh, they're, they're spectacular. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, our next presenter under the leadership of Mr. Ron Gimondo is JFK. Good evening, everyone. Members of the board, President Sassoni, Dr. Lando. Thank you all for being here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Stacy Grimm. I am the parent co-chair for shared decision making at JFK. And I will try to keep it brief, but I did just want to go over our goal for the year, which was a continuation from last year, um, just that we are all a part of a community within the walls of JFK, in the broader community, and in the world. So during, in doing so, we are trying to instill a sense of pride in the world around us through various projects for community service, communications, environment, and celebration of our cultural differences. And this year, with the World Cup, being every four years, we were super excited to do a project that incorporated the World Cup. And we're hoping that in 2026, we could do it again when US, Mexico, and Canada will be hosting. But um, basically what we did was um, we wanted to give the children an opportunity for a fun activity at home and for parents to become involved. We gave them the motivation in gym class they picked, they picked countries randomly. The younger kids were um, decorating flags for the countries, grades two and three, created graphic organizers based on the country that they picked and important facts. Um, and the fourth and fifth graders picked a match and then they com um, completed posters comparing the two countries of the matches. Um, all of the things were displayed, all the projects were displayed in the breezeway for everyone to see as they came in. Um, we were making announcements in the morning about C World Cup facts. We had the brackets um, in the hallway displayed and the children were so excited to just see their posters and also find out about countries that they didn't know about or that someone in the class didn't know that their family was from this country or even countries that they never heard of before. Um, and I just f 
felt like it was so exciting for them. Every day there was a new poster up and they wanted to come and see it and they wanted to hear the facts. And we just thought that it was just such a wonderful experience. They really, really did enjoy it. And so we wanted to highlight that. I do have many other pages, but I'm gonna just keep it brief. So that was our project that we were really proud of this year. Thank you. Now we move on to our secondary schools, the first of which under Dr. Jerry Cosine will be North Middle School. Good evening, I'm Jonah and I'm a sixth grader at North Middle School and I'm a student a representative on our Shared Decision Making Committee. There are many initiatives that our Shared Decision Making Committee continue or start anew. Or our art in the halls is expanding next year. Students complete surveys, surveys to completed surveys to identify their favorite art pieces. Teachers and students were asked to identify prime locations throughout the building where these new paintings could be displayed. The art department collaborated with us to find these locations and hang these pieces. These pieces were all purchased by a very generous and always supportive PTO. At the beginning of the year, 2021 to 2022, we introduced our new school motto. During meetings with shared decision-making committee members this year, we discussed additional ways to permanently make this motto as part of our school building. This committee agreed that placing the lines of, our, of the motto on the steps of the main staircase would be an amazing touch to our building. Special thanks to our PTO for helping with this initiative. This year, North Middle held our second annual Great Kindness Challenge. This is a challenge that is nationally recognized and has been for the last 15 years. During an advisory period, students wrote positive affirm affirmation quotes that were anonymous on post-it notes. On the last morning of Kindness Week, students were greeted by a positive message post-it note on their locker. Kindness Week included a spirit week centered around kindness. Our new initiative of the year is one we are extremely proud of. To keep encouraging kindness, the committee rolled out the You've Been Spotted initiative this year. Teachers were given stickers to give to students whenever they were witness to do to an act of kindness. Student members of the committee created the design of the sticker. The thought was for students to be recognized by anyone in the building, not just their usual teachers. Students have loved to be recognized and are placing stickers on their iPads for display. Once a month, Boisers Live reads, a, reads through a list of names of students that have been spotted in the past months for additional recognition. We are looking forward to expanding this program as well as others next year. Thank you to the Board of Education, Central Mission, and the Great Neck community for all your support. And now we go to, uh, under Dr. Gina Cardellano, South Middle School's Shared Decision-Making Report. Good evening to Dr. Sassuni, Dr. Lando, the board, and fellow SDM mem committee members. My name is Danielle Carroll, and I am one of the co-chairs at South Middle with Patty Sandrowitz. Um, overall, we had three different stages at South Middle. We utilized our advisory time to discuss all of these stages. This year, our goal selection had a personal integrity theme. It encompassed both academic and behavioral integrity, but with more of an intrinsic, intrinsic approach. As the year progressed, we addressed different areas of integrity. We began by examining real world scenarios and then moved on to those more relative to the middle school experience. This combination of scenarios offered the students both real world application as well as exposure to possible experiences they might encounter. Stage one focused on integrity in what would you do TV clips. Clips were paused, discussed, and then replayed to show the outcome. 
The next part of stage one, we had our SDM student members pre-record a scene students may run into, bathroom graffiti. They were shown two different situations of how the bystander reacted to the situation. This opened the door for discussion on types of issues students encounter and how they handle it. Stage two, we introduced our modern version of Dear Abby and had a padlet titled Dear Tony. who made an appearance. <laughs> no words for him, no words. Um, students anonymously submitted questions that they wanted advice on. Then some of our student peer leaders and the student reps on shared decision would answer the questions. The the student body thought it was Tony answering the questions. This was a famous, uh, fabulous outlet for all students, especially the shyer ones. Once questions and answers were approved by the chairs, it was sent back to the public Padlet. This was a useful tool for students to read, even if they didn't submit the question, but had a similar situation. Unfortunately, tech-savvy students were able to figure out how to see the submitters. We tried a Dear Tony email, separate Padlet, etc., but it proved to be extremely, extremely laborious and un ultimately had to shut it down. To close it out, we added some Dear Tony questions and answers to our final edition of our school newspaper. Our final stage was a collaboration with the Parkville kindergartners. Our Dear Tony responders and student reps went to the Parkville to show them how kindness and personal integrity are intertwined. Our, reps, our student reps will discuss this process. Good evening, everybody. I am Dave Rubinchik, a seventh grader. I'm one of the representatives, student representatives of the SDM. Several weeks ago, we went to Parkville along with some peer leaders in the eighth grade to teach some of the kindergartners there how to play the memory game and how to have good personal integrity. When we got there, we of course had to teach them how to play the game. So we showed them a YouTube tutorial and then us, the SDM representatives and the peer leaders, we would give them our own demonstrations on things like cheating, fair play, sportsmanship, and game ethics. We would make sure that they knew what was right and what was wrong, how to play the game without making people feel bad and just overall how to be a good person when you're playing memory games. Uh, hi, I'm Eric Board. I'm a eighth grader at South Middle. Uh, so after we had taught them, we had broken up into small groups with about two to five uh, kindergartners per student rep. Um, when I was with the kids, I saw lots of encouraging behavior, such as positive commentary, like that was a good move or that was a good try. So overall, very positive and kind of as a test to see how well they had internalized it. I had pretended not to pay attention to what they were doing, but I... <laughs> But the result was still the same. They were very positive, and I heard things such as, sorry, I almost skipped your turn. So in the end, I thought that it was a very um, rewarding <laughs> sorry, activity to do, and I would do it again if I could. Hi, uh, I'm Alejandro Gaspar. Uh, I'm a SDM representative and I went on the Parkville trip. So to wrap things up, um, when we left, Parkville students knew what integrity was and they learned about using kind words. Afterwards, our cameraman Colin, he shared the footage with HTV and it was then broadcasted to the entirety of Grey Neck South Middle. And so there was then an advisory activity in which students enjoyed various games while maintaining kind language. Thank you.
For those of you that are standing in the wings, we certainly welcome you to come join us. We have many seats here to listen to the last two of our shared decision-making reports. So please, if you'd like to take a moment and come in and join us, you are most welcome to. Welcome. And, and now we move to uh, the second to last of our reports from North High School under Dr. Dan Holtzman, the shared decision-making report from North High. Good evening, President Sassuni, Dr. Dr. Lando, members of the board, district administration, and shared decision-making committees. Um, unfortunately, um, the chairs couldn't reschedule, so um, I'm here representing the committee on behalf of Leslie Benjamin, Moji Pomerani, who are the parent co-chairs, and teacher co-chairs, Alana Sitchell. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a, a tremendous amount to report because um, we apparently did the same exact things that Jonah did. So it's, it's you've, you've heard it already. Um, well done, Jonah. Um, so, so we focused on our 10th grade advisory. Um, the students on the committee brought up how they felt the 10th grade advisory program wasn't as valuable as it was in the past. So with this knowledge, the committee of 10th graders and upperclassmen met with the administration, guidance counselors to discuss what could be improved. With that knowledge, the 10th grade advisory program will be vamped for the fall of 2023. Components include organizing a day trip for advisory classes, perhaps to the Holocaust Museum and Tolerance Center. Uh, we'll be bringing back the, the uh, Halloween fair for the community, which we're very excited about. The 10th grade community, the 10th grade advisories will be responsible for the planning and execution of that. Um, that will take place in the Great Neck North High School gym on the, late, on the Thursday before Halloween. Um, the event will be promoted at, to all the Great Neck Elementary Schools. Each advisory class will be responsible to create and man a booth at the event with a competition for the two best booths. Uh, to eliminate crossover in the 9th and 10th grade advisory, there will be a few joint topics hosted in the auditorium um, for the classes to hear together. Um, we wanted to create a leadership culture at Great Neck North with a legacy circle. Graduating seniors, uh, we like to ask uh, graduating seniors to create short videos for the younger classes relaying the importance of being good citizens of Great Neck North. Messages such as what they need to take care of Great Neck North, how they can take care of themselves and each other, um, and what they can do as a part of uh, the Great Neck community. We want to uh, revamp um, and reissue the idea of the day of service, community, creating a community day of service for the entire Great Neck High School community, uh, the whole, whole Great Neck school body, rather. Um, each student will take place in part, part in an activity that benefits the school, the Great Neck community, and, or other charities. Uh, the event is in, still in the planning phases. We hope to get it up and running by the fall. If not the fall, then certainly the spring. Um, we've continued on with the annual book talk for parents, staff, and administration to foster the school home connection. Um, we hosted an in-person book talk on the evening of November 7th. Ms. Oana Scholl, our school social worker, moderated the book Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. Um, and this past uh, spring, we read um, Lessons in Chemistry, um, and that conversation was facilitated by Jeff Gilden, one of our English teachers. Um, we decided to keep this model moving forward, the fall book talk in the evening and a parent self-help book uh, with the school's guidance counselor and a spring book talk in the afternoon um, with a, either an English teacher or a member of our staff. Class events, it was determined that, um, and by this came from the students as well, that the ninth and 10th graders didn't seem to have class-wide events as the juniors and seniors did. Um, so the freshmen this year held a movie night, sophomores held a sophomore s'mores. Uh, and going forward, um, freshmen will have their own dedicated barbecue after school on the first Friday after, after the school year has begun. Um, the sophomore s'mores event will be moved to earlier in the year uh, so friendships can be fostered and there's something fun to look forward to at the beginning of school. Um, we added a couple of components to the seniors as well. We did uh, senior sunrise and senior sunset. Unfortunately, senior sunset this year had to be canceled because of the, the wildfires. Um, and as part of an, an earlier initiative, uh, the auditorium at North High was officially renamed uh, for my predecessor, Bernie Kaplan. Uh, the dedication ceremony took place on Sunday, December 5th. Uh, faculty, parents, and students that came together to honor Mr. Kaplan by presenting the plaque 
and uh, naming the auditorium after his love of the arts. Thank you very much. And finally, under Dr. Christopher Gitz, uh, the South High School Shared Decision-Making Report. Do we have a representative here this evening? Thank you. Um, so with that, uh, these reports show the, the, the great and wonderful tradition of goals meeting and goals teams and goals committees in the Great Neck Public Schools, which were the foundation for shared decision making in New York State. And Mrs. Suni, do you have anything that you'd like to add at this point? Thanks, Dr. Lando. Um, just reflecting on the reports that we've heard, understanding that we have to be a little bit more cursory than usual, and I, I regret that because ordinarily we would have heard from each committee at greater length, but even the snapshots that we heard were so wonderful. Um, thinking about the work of your committees throughout the year, knowing that it's across stakeholder groups that you've included administrators, teachers, in many cases in the secondary level, the students who we had the pleasure of hearing tonight so articulately describing your goals. Um, it's very moving and it's um, a pleasure actually. Um, so I wanted to thank you and, and if there's any members of the board who would want to add to, add to that, please do. I really do want to thank you, and especially since you all rescheduled to be here um, on short notice. Um, if I may also add, as a by way of transition, we have our students involved at the secondary level on shared decision-making committees, and also throughout the year, we have our student representatives who have attended late-night board meetings, often um, without description of what's going on other than just an agenda and then listening to folks. And um, I'd like to acknowledge you this evening to thank you for your attendance and um, to ask if you would each please say your names, what school you're from, and what grade you're rising to next year. Thank you. Two weeks ago when we were together, we as a board, and we had UPTC reports, we reflected on the reports from UPTC and all the varying committees and all the stakeholder groups, and we were observing at that time how things move best in the district, uh, especially since our district is so large and so fulsome, when the different stakeholder groups can come together and work toward common goals. And of course, shared decision-making committees across the district um, who work toward goals together in furtherance of school-based goals together are the perfect example. So again, I thank you for that. Um, it's the work that gets done throughout the year and often early in the morning when people are trying to, or right in the middle of the school, of the work day, when people are trying to navigate other um, activities at the same time. So thank you for all of the efforts you had to make to be on the committees and also all of the juggling you had to do in order to stay on the committees. We appreciate it. It's helped the district. It's very clear. It's helped our students. And um, before we move on with the agenda, um, I'm very grateful to see so many of you here tonight. And of course, um, we have some tenure candidates that we'll be hearing from and about very shortly. 
um, there is a moment of um, unscripted recognition as well, since we're on recognitions, where I'm going to ask us to pause and reflect again, as we have a few times already. And in this instance, it's to recognize our colleague, Mr. Jeff Shi. So Mr. Shi, my friend Jeff, and I were elected together in 2017, and he has helped this board navigate some very difficult years, not incidentally a pandemic, but also the policy committee with Mrs. Perez, and also many difficult decisions that um, are made at exec session, involving tough matters, in, uh, involving our students and personnel, and always with great care, always with compassion. And after six years of service on this board, um, has decided that he uh, was not going to run again, and we will soon be welcoming a successor, Mrs. Chan, to the board. But at this time, it is appropriate for a community to give thanks to an unelected, uh, sorry, the opposite, an unpaid elected public official who has served with grace and dignity for these last six years. Thank you, Jeff. I just want to say this is probably single, singularly most important achievement that I have in my entire life. Um, but, but I got those strength from the community and I got those strength from the administrator, the teachers. But most importantly, we are doing this all for our kids. So it is <laughs> worth it. Okay, June is a month of transitions, as we know. So, thank you again, Jeff. And am I the only one speaking? Did anyone else want to add anything? I feel very, like I'm giving a soliloquy. I don't mean to. All right. Um, the next item on our agenda, then, as we return to the printed agenda, is item 4A. And for that, we're going to turn back to our interim superintendent, Dr. Lando, for the recognition of our candidates for tenure from the middle schools. Please come in and sit down. There's plenty of seats. And if you come to the front row, you get to see firsthand the candidates for tenure. So please, please come and sit. There, there are many seats here close to the front. Please come in and make yourselves comfortable.
As, as our tenure candidates and families are entering and finding their seats, I would just like to offer a few more of our student delegates who just joined us the opportunity to also receive their due recognition. So for those of you who just joined us, if you could also please rise, tell us your name, your school, and your rising grade for next year. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, President, S President Sassouni, Vice President Xi, and Trustees Berkowitz, Perez, and Tak. Last month, tenure recommendations were submitted for each of tonight's candidates. And based on her review, Dr. Prendergast had planned to meet with the candidates and then present them to the Board of Education for approval of appointment to tenure. In keeping with her long-standing practice, I met with these outstanding educators and attest to the board that each candidate has earned such recommendation. Our middle school principals are here to provide additional insight, and at this time, I ask North Middle School Principal, Dr. Jerry Kozine, to come forward to present his tenure-eligible faculty members to the board. Good evening, everyone. I'd ask that my my deserving dozen, please come up. <laughs> they need to see. And I'd ask when I speak of you that you please just come up here so people can recognize who you are. President Suni, I know that you're back there, members of the board, <laughs> Dr. Lando, Central Office Administrators, colleagues, family, and friends. I proudly stand before you this evening to present 12 exceptional candidates for tenure in the Great Neck Public Schools. Each of these individuals has had a significant impact upon the lives of our students in the North Middle Learning Community and I look forward to watching them continually grow as compassionate, committed, and inspiring educators. Victoria Andriachi. <clears throat> Since arriving as a sixth grade ELA reading teacher, Victoria Andriachi has greatly enhanced our overall learning community. She is all in when it comes to challenging students to improve their reading and writing skills through the development of critical text analysis and literary skills. Small group instruction and individualized conferencing allow her to facilitate learning while meeting the diverse needs of her students. Vic shared that middle school is more fun. She is able to offer students book choice, believing if they are hooked here, there is great potential to develop lifelong uh, readers. Finally, Vic believes the middle school provides opportunities to impact students as they develop into people, from children to young adults. Vic also, also thrives outside of her classroom. She has accompanied sixth grade students to Green Kill and Frost Valley. She is co-advisor of North Middle's GSA, and she works tirelessly as the stage manager for our amazing musical. Ms. Andrea, she was honored to present at the 2021 NCTE National Convention, where she focused on diversifying her curriculum to include mirrors and windows for our students and increasing the representation in the books that they read. Ms. Andriachi shared a funny anecdote about a parent saying to her at open house, it's great that you're my child's best friend. <laughs> Vic strives to have every student feel welcomed and heard in her classroom, and she has surely been successful. <laughs> Jenna Ellis. One could argue that Ms. Jenna Ellis has extremely poor timing, or it might be brilliant. She began in February of 2020 and had just 10 days under her belt as an earth science teacher at NMS before the COVID shutdown. However, as a true professional, Ms. Ellis was all in as she worked tirelessly to engage her students in virtual learning. 
getting to know their personalities, their learning styles, and their likes, dislikes, to better connect with each and every one of them. And in the three years since, Jenna hasn't stopped. She has embraced our science department's transition to NGSS, empowering students to engage with science on a level that makes it real and provides context to their own lives. In our conversation, Ms. Ellis focused on middle level students who are going through what she calls a tender time. She says this is her favorite part to help students discover who they are as they come into their own. Outside of her classroom, Jenna served as a soccer coach of North Middle School for two years, and she has had great success as the coach of the North High fencing team. Jenna Ellis shared that she loves everything involving nature, so it's obviously her destiny to share her love and knowledge with NMS students as they discover the beauty of our planet and the science connected to it. Thank you, Jenna. <clears throat> Nick Aramis. Nick Haramis joined the NMS this past fall after completing his first three years in Great Neck on the south side of town. From his start at NMS, Nick has embraced his role as an individual who can take our technology program into the 21st century. He has spearheaded new projects with our students, making the creations more current and appealing to our students, successfully marrying old school shop with modern day technology. Nick shared that his technology classes provide our students with a great break from the paper and pen of the traditional classroom. Students are able to experience, experience and experiment as they engage in hands-on activities that may spark a lifelong interest. He enjoys working with middle schoolers because this time is such an important part of their lives as they try to find themselves. He knows students will have difficulty during this time, but it's important to let students know it's okay to fail, as this is when students can truly learn. Nick also works with students outside of his classroom. He is the advisor for NMS's Woodworking Club and the South Middle School Robotics Team, and he volunteered as a chaperone at Frost Valley. There is a dearth of certified technology teachers, but we recognize how critical this curriculum is, and we are fortunate to have Nick Karamis, who is committed to hands-on experiences for all of our students. <clears throat> Ashley Linehan. There is no doubt that Ashley Linehan was meant to work with middle schoolers. She is an incredible advocate for her students and their learning in her sixth grade reading classes. Since joining North Middle in 2018, Ms. Linehan has committed herself to empowering students through literacy. She has created a TC haven for our students. To walk in and see the anchor charts, student projects, and read alouds is inspiring. When we discussed the middle level student, Ms. Linehan beamed that she spoke of helping students find their passion, to find their joy, she focused on the pleasure she takes in watching her students mature, to see their social, emotional, physical, and academic growth as they adapt to sixth grade and middle school, and the satisfaction she gets from joining them on this journey as a guide and a fellow traveler. Ms. Lenahan takes part in the GNPS community outside of her classroom. She leapt, pun intended, at the opportunity to be part of the Northside Gymnastics Program, coaching at both North High and North Middle. She also serves as an advisor for our Social Justice Club. Ashley shared that Mr. Murphy, her ninth grade teacher, sparked her love for school and reading, and I am confident that Ashley will serve the same role for many of her students over her career. Congratulations, Ashley. Okay, third of the way there. Um, Dan Golden. Dan Golden is a compassionate educator who has enhanced the North Middle School Special Education Department and our learning community. Dan's parents were both involved in education and his sister is a social worker at Saddle Rock and Baker. So it was no surprise that Dan ended up working with students in Great Neck. Mr. Golden loves seeing students in his intensive needs class persevere and overcome, taking pride in their growth as they challenge themselves to become better students and better citizens. He empowers his students to have confidence and recognize their individual strengths. Dan's classroom is a well-oiled machine with an intentional focus on social skills. He maximizes social opportunities to integrate students into the fabric of our community. For example, Champions Cup, North Middle School's own coffee house, allows students to run the show, and there isn't a Friday morning when teachers and staff aren't excited to stop by to see our students flourish in their roles. Outside of the classroom, Dan serves on our shared decision-making committee, and he is the district's secondary liaison for the Life Skills Consortium. Dan teaches in our extended day program and he serves as a coach for our seventh grade boys soccer team. 
Dan Golden shared with me that his favorite part of teaching is when his students let him know that they appreciate what he does for them, when they acknowledge that he is looking out for them. Dan, a little secret, we all know this. Congratulations. <laughs> Elizabeth Leone. Liz Leone joined North Middle School mid-year during her student teaching. Liz, the consummate professional, welcomed the challenge, for she thrives when sharing her love of science with students. When discussing middle schoolers, Liz highlights their hunger to learn. Whether teaching our sixth or eighth grade students, Liz believes the connection she establishes with her students sets the tone for the learning that takes place. She values those opportunities when students relate to the concept and the connections and understandings are solidified. She shared the aha moment never gets old. And Liz strives to understand each student's needs, providing patience and support until that moment in it clicks. Ms. Leone has enhanced North Middle School's science research program. She challenges students to immerse themselves in research and the culminating science symposium allows students to present their research and findings to classmates, faculty members, and staff members. In addition, Ms. Leone is a co-advisor for North Middle School Science Olympiad Club and advisor in our North Middle School advisory program. When discussing her students, Ms. Leone, always the science teacher, spoke about the phases and changes they go through as they transform during their middle school journey. Of course, these phases aren't as predictable as the moon's phases that are discussed in her science. <laughs> Our students' growth ebbs and flows, or science again, but ultimately our students do change in much of other shape by teachers such as Liz Leone. Thank you. <laughs> Tom Livingston. <laughs> Tom Livingston joined NMS as a science teacher in 2018, and since then he has had a seismic impact upon our learning community. He cla his classes have included earth science, science research, and sixth grade science. Mr. Livingston makes science come alive in his classroom. He is like having our own Bill Nye the science guy. <laughs> he appreciates the wonder of his sixth grade students and knows they thrive when provided with opportunities to engage, on, engage in hands-on learning. He takes pleasure in watching students analyze data as they become scientists working through the process of discovery. However, Tom realizes that middle school is a time when students are discovering more about themselves as they become independent learners. Accordingly, he crafts lessons that are calibrated to meet them both at their developmental and academic levels, where they are stretched but still experience success. Tom thrives in taking part in North Middle School outside of his classroom. He co-chairs our BCG, where he has spearheaded the advisory program, academic integrity, and teachers observing teachers. Tom serves as a coach of North Middle School robotics team, and he lives for our Frost Valley trip. <laughs> Knowing that this experience offers students a chance to bond and connect on a different and deeper level. Tom shared that he appreciates the small and laughable moments when his students make the classroom come alive. Tom, it is you that bring life to our science classrooms. Thank you. <clears throat> Tanya Montero. Tanya Montero has been sharing her love of teaching Spanish and her love of learning with North Middle School students since 2019, and she has thrived as an educator and student advocate. Spanish comes to life in Tanya's classroom. Through the use of hands-on activities, higher level questioning, and the celebration of culture, she immerses her students in all things Espanol. And it can't be ignored, as it is part of the Tanya Montero narrative, that Tanya came to the US from Ecuador as a seventh grade student. She did not speak the language, but through hard work and a commitment to learning, Ms. Montero has enjoyed great success. In fact, Tanya noted what a challenging time middle school was for her. So she empathizes with her own NMS students who are also looking to establish bonds, to grow, to learn. She appreciates that her students are bold and take risks as they all trying to figure themselves and each other out. Outside of the classroom, Tanya makes connections with her students. She is an advisor of the Multicultural Club, and our culminating Multicultural Night is one of the most celebrated events on our calendar. Tanya Montero believes that being a teacher is a give and take, where students give her so much, and it is her responsibility to give it back so that they grow and feel appreciated. I can assure you, Tanya, they feel it in your classroom. <clears throat> Kevin Parker.
Kevin Parker has taught every level of English at North Middle School since arriving in 2019, but he has hit his stride with our eighth grade, cultivating his students' love of reading and writing while preparing them for the challenges of high school. Kevin believes middle schoolers are engaged but possess a playful element that provides him with the opportunity to have a critical impact upon his students as learners and as citizens. He shared that middle school students want to know who we are, so he enjoys sharing stories with his students. They especially love the fact that his brother plays professional soccer. <laughs> Kevin understands that not every student is all in, and he prides himself on reaching those students. Through differentiation, book choice, and varied assessment options, he allows his students to learn and show what they know in myriad ways. Kevin is an active, out, is active outside of his classroom. He's a member of our CG and has coached soccer, tennis, and volleyball. And he believes coaching provides him with another venue to establish connections, connections with our students. Kevin Parker smiles as he speaks about the sense of fulfillment he gets from teaching and coaching the students of NMS. He actually called himself selfish because he gets so much from it. But don't worry, it's not a one-sided relationship, Kevin. Positively, your, your positivity impacts the students and community of North Middle on a daily basis. Francois Rodriguez. Since arriving in 2018, Francoise Rodriguez has been sharing her love of Spanish and technology. As a world language teacher, Ms. Rodriguez relishes the opportunity to inspire her students to become lifelong learners of another language. Through the use of hands-on activities and technology, Ms. Rodriguez immerses her students in Espanol. These types of connections help students engage with language in a context that helps their learning to stick. Francoise welcomes the opportunity to help her students mold their character during a time of their lives when they are finding out who they are. She spoke about the challenge of manage, managing her students' behavior and energy, but smiled when she said, it's our job to help them channel that energy. <laughs> Ms. Rodriguez is an active member of North Middle School's community outside of her classroom. She serves on our technology, relay field day, and advisory committees. She has traveled to Greenkill and Frost Valley and she proudly represented her Puerto Rican heritage by hosting a table at the North Middle School Multicultural Night. During the pandemic, Francoise drove to her sixth and seventh grade students' homes so that they could see her face before the end of the year. She stood outside with a sign that celebrated her students belonging to what she called the Rod Squad. This speaks to Francoise's desire to establish community, and Great Neck is better because she is in our community. William Siciliano. Since arriving at North Middle School, William Siciliano has taught Computer 6, Computer 7, Computers 8, Technology 7, Technology 8. So he's been able to interact with and engage a vast majority of North Middle School students, loving the opportunity to have students harness the power of technology. He believes that helping students learn about coding is something that really expands their horizons where they begin to think and see things differently. In addition, Will believes it essential to continually have meaningful conversations with students about their responsibilities as digital citizens. He feels these discussions help students think more about how they engage with computers and technology so that they understand the positive and negative power of interacting in the digital world. NMS is fortunate to have an old school technology program where students are provided with opportunities to work with saws, power tools, belt sanders, etc. Will talked about the importance of hands-on experience for middle school students, noting that the aha moments make it all worth it. Will also impacts our community outside of his classroom. He serves as a co-advisor to the North Middle School Popular Gaming Club, and he enjoys his role as a facilitator in our advisory program and as a member of BCG. Will Siciliano spoke about the importance of seeing the way things connect and how he has grown as a middle level educator. We're glad that Will Siciliano connected with North Middle School. Iris Walsh. <laughs> Iris Walsh has a nice kid. Okay. Um, <laughs> Iris Walsh is an exemplary world language teacher, certified in French, Spanish, and TESOL 
and she excels in her role as a department chair for the North Middle School World Language Department. Iris is absolutely all in to strengthen her own pedagogy while continually supporting and strengthening, stretching her department members to do to be the very best at what they do. Iris loves being a part of middle school, a place where she has called home for the last 15 years. She feels middle school is her niche as it provides students with their first opportunity to learn a new language. She believes the foundation begun, the begun in our middle school has the potential to establish a passion that students can, can cultivate throughout their lives. Iris appreciates the students' eagerness and excitement to learn. She incorporates music, pop culture, and technology into her lessons to motivate her students and hook them into learning. Iris understands the power of establishing relationships, and she strives to find ways to connect to every one of her students. Ms. Walsh leads by example, immersing herself in many aspects of NMS. She's an active member of our Shared Decision Committee and Advisory Program, and she has spearheaded two major world language fundraisers. Iris Wall, Iris Wall, she is a fantastic teacher, leader, and person. She cares deeply about her students, and she truly believes in the importance of celebrating our cultural diversity. There is no doubt that the culture of North Middle School is stronger because of Ms. Walsh. President Sassuni and the members of the board, it is with great pleasure, pride, and potential of promise that I recommend this to des deserving dozen of candidates for tenure in the Great Neck Public Schools. Thank, thank you, Dr. Kosheim. Thank you, candidates. And we'll be back to you in just a few minutes. And at this time, would South Middle School Principal Dr. Gina Cardellano please come forward to present her tenure eligible faculty, members to the board. President Sassuni, members of the board, Dr. Lando, Central Office Administrators, colleagues, family, and friends, I proudly speak before you this evening as I present three exceptional candidates for tenure in the Great Neck Public Schools. Ms. Lisa Capello. Prior Prior to her arrival at Great Neck South Middle School in 2019, Ms. Capello completed a number of special education leave replacement positions in the Cold Spring Harbor, East Meadow, Limbrick, and Levittown School Districts. Ms. Capello is a very talented special education teacher. She draws, draws from her many years of teaching experience in order to create innovative and engaging lessons. She is warm and upbeat, and students really thrive in her presence. She has a very calm demeanor and always exudes positive energy. She truly wants her students to do well and will do whatever it takes in order to get them to understand a concept. She is constantly looking for new ways to reach them and utilizes a variety of dynamic teaching tools to address their varied learning styles. She helps her students make connections to other content areas and offers many strategies for improvement. She fully understands the role of a special education teacher and is a champion for her students. Overall, Ms. Capello is an outstanding educator and an asset to our school. She is kind, inviting, good-humored, and very flexible, all key characteristics of a successful special education teacher. It is my pleasure to recommend her for tenure in the Great Neck Public Schools. Ms. Heidi D'Onofrio. <laughs> Prior to her arrival at Great Neck South Middle School in 2019, Ms. D'Onofrio worked as a librarian at SUNY Old Westbury. As our library media specialist, Ms. D'Onofrio has done a great deal to create an incredibly vibrant library that students flock to each day. 
She is always aware of the latest young adult bulk books and is easily able to suggest titles to our students. Students love interacting with her because she is so well versed on various genres and series that they enjoy reading. She creates and promotes monthly and yearly reading challenges for students. She brought the overdrive system to South Middle and collaborated with other secondary librarians to create a shared collection for Great Neck students. She partners with the Great Neck Public Library and brings in representatives several times a year so students can learn of their vast offerings. Ms. D'Onofrio is very involved in the life of South Middle. She is the advisor to the Gamers Unplugged Club and the Stage Crew. She is an active committee member of both the Technology Committee and our Professional Development Group, where she has presented on various topics, including breakout EDU and the use of SORA. She is an active member of our Relay for Life Committee and for the past two years has created a very successful fundraiser using the breakout EDU boxes. Ms. D'Onofrio is a team player and works extremely well with the library staff in creating a friendly, inviting atmosphere, which is home for many of our students. I am very excited to recommend her for tenure in the Great Neck Public Schools. <laughs> and last but not least, Ms. Allison McManus. Ms. McManus began working in the Great Neck Public School District in 2018 as a leave replacement special education teacher at North Middle School, South High School, and South Middle School. In 2019, we were fortunate to be able to offer her a probationary position in our school. Ms. McManus is an incredibly hardworking individual. She is caring, patient, and respectful, and her students feel comfortable in her presence. She is constantly looking for new ways to engage her students. She has taught in all types of special education settings and has worked with students of all ability levels. She gets along well with her colleagues and has an excellent rapport with her students. She adapts easily to any teaching environment and her colleagues have a great deal of respect for her. Ms. McManus has been a member of our Relay for Life Committee and has volunteered at our annual car wash. In addition, she has served on our Shared Decision-Making Committee and worked on various projects to enrich the life of our students. Along with her general education co-teacher, she presented at the New York State Middle School Association Regional Conference on the topic of gradeless grading system. Ms. McManus is an extremely motivated teacher. She is an asset to our building, and we are fortunate to have Ms. McManus working with our most vulnerable students each day. She is upbeat and encouraging and always has a smile on her face. It is my pleasure to recommend her for tenure in the Great Neck Public Schools. Thank you, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Cardellano. President Sassuni, Vice President Xi, Trustees Berkowitz, Perez, and Tak. It is my privilege to present these 15 candidates to you for approval of appointment to tenure. Thank you, Dr. Lando. I'm going to entertain a motion. Is there a motion to accept the candidates for tenure? Is there a second? Second. Board discussion, I would like to go first, if I may. First, I would like to congratulate each of the 15 individuals who stood before us just now in celebration and your families. This is a big moment in each of your lives and we are genuinely happy for you. We celebrate you and your achievements thus far. I think what I would also like to emphasize, and we do this at every tenure recognition, but somehow tonight it feels all the more poignant in light of the fact that you are um, among Dr. Prendergast's graduating classes, as I would describe it, since you began under her tutelage, um, is that we rely on your continual growth. We rely on 
the process, the selection process that yielded such wonderful candidates in the first place, a highly competitive process, the four-year probationary process during which there were direct observations of your work, and the pride that your um, administrators have in your work that is not only evident tonight as they speak about you, but also in writing as we read about you. There's a great deal of care that's gone into your reaching this milestone event in your lives. We're genuinely happy for you. And this district and this board has always been committed to the continual and professional growth of its professionals. And you are among them now. Congratulations. Mrs. Berkowitz. I'm going to echo what Mrs. Sassuni just said. Tenure is a very big deal in this district. It's the reason why we celebrate it in public and not just a note in your mailbox the next day like some districts do. And I welcome you all to the Great Neck family. And I use that expression very deliberately because it is a family you could tell by the pride that your principals exhibited when they spoke about you, that they will always be there to support you, as will every other administrator in this district. I also welcome you now to your tenured position here in Great Neck. Good luck to you all. I'd like to offer my congratulations also and to say to all of you who may not know that I felt the very same way about 35 years ago <laughs> in this room before it was renovated. And I just wanted to say that what I always felt was if you love what you do, you will never feel you worked a day in your life. And after 28 years of teaching here, I still felt the same way. And when I retired, I wound up here five months later. <laughs> so just think what might lie ahead of you. But congratulations to all of you, and I wish you the kind of career that I had here in Great Neck. All the best. Mr. Shi. I just want to say congratulations, and I uh, just want to echo what uh, Ms. Perez says. And uh, on the very first meeting I had with Dr. Pendergast, she said the same thing. If you love what you do, you never work day in your life. And uh, you guys work extremely hard, um, and it, we support you, your family support you. But, uh, you know, the rewards is in abundance uh, in the students behind me. Um, they are the future, and you choose the right profession. Thank you. Mr. Tuck. Not sure what else I could add. Uh, that's been said far more eloquently than I can. Um, I'd like to wish you all congratulations. I know uh, my daughters have had uh, many of you, both as uh, teachers and uh, coaches. And um, they've enjoyed being in your class. And I know my wife and I have um, you know, been very, uh, very privileged to have them in, in your class, and I'm sure the parents uh, of the other teachers that uh, my daughters have not have uh, feel similarly. So I wish you to your, I wish you congratulations, welcome to your tenured position, and look forward to watching you grow as, as the years move by. So thank you. If I'm going to coin you as the Fab 15, if you could please wait for a moment and take a photo before partaking of refreshments on your way out. Um, I think Ms. Bowler is near. Okay. Where would you like them to be for that photo, Ms. Bowler? Oh, I was just responding to a note from Dr. Lando. I don't mind waiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> In that case, all right, so if you don't mind holding off briefly while we move to the next item on the agenda and we will do a summative photo in a few moments. Pardon? 
Oh, goodness, we have to take a vote. The suspense. <laughs> All in favor of the motion that has already been seconded. Aye. Aye. It's unanimous. Congratulations. We're going to move on the agenda to another item and then do a, a, I guess, a summative kind of a photo and refreshments. The next item on the agenda is item 4B, which is the recognition of the United Parent Teacher Council Executive Board, boards actually, the outgoing and the incoming boards. And uh, for that, we'll ask who's speaking to that or are we just taking a vote on it? Or is anyone speaking to that, Dr. Lando? Uh, in my experience, it's the privilege of the board to read the names of the candidates. It would also be my privilege should you like me to do so. Oh, I don't mind reading the names. I wondered if anyone from UPTC wanted to, uh, to do that themselves. All right. In that case, allow us to congratulate the outgoing and thank the outgoing board and to wish good luck to the incoming board. And their names are as follows. And many of you are here, so why don't you stand, please, those of you who are here from the outgoing UPTC board so that we can please recognize you for all of your efforts this past year. President Rachel Doppelt. <laughs> Co-president Matt Jagoda, who could not be here this evening. Executive Vice President Pargol Kadavi. <laughs> Vice Presidents Jason Gilbert, Andrew Laufer, and Julie Lam Leong. Please stand. Julie, stand. Vice Presidents and Presidents Council Bill Grohl and Bettina Siegel. Vice Presidents for Communications, Sharon Dickey and Michael Glickman. <laughs> Treasurer Kevin Sun. <laughs> Member at Large, Moji Pormirati. <laughs> and Teacher Representative, Ms. Kristen Klein. Thank you for the year past. Some of you are staying on, some of you have rotated off, and so some of the names will be familiar as we go through the new slate. For the 2023-24 year, the presidents are listed as, Matt, please rise if you're here, Michael Glickman and Andrew Laufer. Linda Galsim and Kevin Sun are executive vice presidents. <laughs> vice presidents Paragol Kadavi, Alvina Lowe, and Bettina Siegel. <laughs> vice presidents and Pe presidents council Marissa Brandeis Kermanian and Julie Lam Leung. Vice Presidents Communications, Jennifer Coda and Kim Shader. <laughs> Treasurer, Le, excuse me, Larissa Pshen, Pshenika. <laughs> Member at Large, Matt Jagoda. <laughs> and thank you to Kristen Klein for staying on as teacher representative. On behalf of the board, I'd like to thank UPTC for being a partner uh, throughout all of the district's endeavors this year. And uh, we look forward to working with the new executive board next year.
That was a recognition, not a vote, correct? Okay. I, I believe you've already been voted in by your own constituency. All right. Uh, the next item on the agenda is 4C, the recognition of the PTA and PTO presidents. And perhaps we'll do the same. It's a night for re recognizing a lot of um, wonderful volunteerism in our community. If the past presidents who I'm about to name are here, please stand. From Parkville, Annie Chen and Lee Tu. From E.M. Baker, Nicole Idelson and Adele Tehrani. From JFK, Paige Dejmal, Dalia Haguli, and Samantha Talasazan. From Lakeville, Anita Chung and Yvonne Wong Fine. From Saddle Rock, Adrian Hollander, Daniela Neely, and Natasha Rafinia. From North Middle, Jessica Hughes, Connie K. Way, and Katie Wellington. At South Middle, Antoinette Capodano. From North High, Sarah Kane and Jordana Levine. From South High, Sharon Dickey, Elena Kung, and Carol Valick. From Village, Elizabeth McCarthy. And from SEPTA, Margaret Adams, Bita Hendizade, and Shiley Koda. <laughs> and along the lines of what Donna said a moment ago, be careful, you could end up here. <laughs> the incoming presidents of the schools are as follows. And if you're here, and some of them are similar names, because some people keep asking for more punishment. <laughs> So congratulations to you in advance. From Parkville, Donna Fu and Agnes Tam. From E.M. Baker, Jody Hakimi and Lauren Litt. From JFK, Paige Dejmal, Dahlia Haguli and Samantha Talasazan. From Lakeville, Anita Chung and Yvonne Wong Fain. <laughs> At Saddle Rock, Daniela Neely, Maria Steiner, and Le Liza Yeris. <laughs> At North Middle, Jessica Hughes, Katie Wellington, and Kay Wei. At South Middle, Clara Feecher, Si Cheng Peng, and Karen Yan. At North High, Jordana Levine, Sarah Kane, and Doug Brenner. At South High, Elena Kung, Sharon Dickey. At Village, Laura Zirinsky. And for Septa, Shiley Coda. Thank you all for the work you've already done and for the work you're about to do. Again, in partnership with the board, with the district, it really does take a village, it really does take a lot of constituent parts coming together for the greater whole, and um, we appreciate it. And the kids are all better off for it, so thank you very, very much. All right, I think that the recognition part of our agenda has concluded, and therefore, we might be up to Ms. Bowler's opportunity to take that photo. So, um, 
With everyone's permission, we'll take a short break. There are some refreshments in the, in the hall, in the lobby, and we are gonna resume, I'm gonna say, realistically in, let's say, 15 minutes, so that we can get on with our agenda, and there is more to come. Thank you.
Wow, that worked. <laughs> so for anyone who'd like, uh, there still are seats here if you'd like to come back in to the library. And we're up to item five on the agenda, which is the acceptance of minutes. And once again, uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues. We have a lot of minutes because we've had a lot of meetings and um, they were necessary. So is there a motion to accept the minutes from the May 30th, May 31st, June 1st, June 7th, June 9th, and June 14th 2023. June 12th. Pardon? It says 14th. Oh. No, June 12th. No, June 12th. June 12th. Today is the 14th. Oh, okay. I printed this before it was updated. Thank you. Were there other changes that I should have made note of? Okay. Okay. That's Today fine. Today is the 14th. Understood. I'm reading from a different draft of the agenda. So I'll, I'll do this again. The approval of minutes from the May 30th, May 31st, June 1st, June 7th, June 9th, and June 12th meetings of the board. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, the motion carries. The next item on the agenda is item six. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the acceptance of communications received by the board since our last public action meeting, and there has been a significant amount of communication. One item from a local group of faith leaders praying for the well-being of Dr. Prendergast and the board. Uh, another from a local non-public school offering a day of learning in memory of Dr. Prendergast. Another from a news organization requesting comment for her obituary. Another expressing condolence to the board from the New York State School Boards Association. Another expressing condolences from the S Sephardic Heritage Alliance. Another expressing condolence from the Nassau Suffolk School Boards Association. And another series of letters from a parent expressing concern about Dr. Prendergast. Is there a motion in favor of accepting all of those communications as I've n mentioned them? So moved. Is there a second? second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. We are now up to our board and administrative affairs. The next item on the agenda is item 7A. Before we turn to item 7A, um, I just want to say a few words. Um, our board meets quite often. We do, uh, to the best of our ability, the work of the public, trying to uh, effectuate the policies and bring forth the budget um, for our schools and to overall um, do the work of the district to the best of our ability. Back in January, when we learned from Dr. Prendergast that she intended to retire and when we collectively as a board um, met and decided to retain uh, district wise to help us convene a search for her successor. We all said at the time to each other and to the public that we understood that the single most important thing that we could do as board trustees, the greatest legacy that we would leave would be our choice for the next superintendent of schools. Hard stop. And we spent the last several months trying to effectuate the best choice possible. And we've spent a great deal of time on that choice. I want to thank my colleagues for hours of work in that regard. We spent time generating our own personal wish lists for what it was we were looking for in a successor candidate. 
we juxtaposed our lists together. We then um, participated in our own exercise of prioritization. Then we um, engaged district-wise. District-wise convened focus groups and went out to the broader community and much work was done to iterate what we were looking for in a successor candidate. And of course, all these months have intervened and just two weeks ago, we were recognizing Dr. Prendergast, thanking her for her stewardship with us of these schools and relying on her to help us in the transition to her successor. And nevertheless, even though she is not with us and able to do that any longer, we are now at this juncture at the critical point where the board has effectuated our search. We have reached a unanimous conclusion of who we think will be the successor candidate. After a great deal of thought and reflection and consideration, and so for that reason, I'm going to read the following resolution and ask for a motion. The resolution states, be it resolved that pursuant to the education law of the state of New York, the Board of Education herewith appoints Dr. Kenneth R. Bossert as superintendent of schools for a five-year term beginning August 1st, 2023 and ending July 31st, 2028. And be it further resolved that the President of the Board of Education is herewith authorized to execute on behalf of the Board of Education an employment agreement between the Board of Education and Dr. Kenneth R. Bossert that includes compensation, benefits, and other terms and conditions of employment, which agreement was previously reviewed by the members of the Board of Education. Is there a motion in favor of the resolution as I just read it? Is there a second? Second. Any further board discussion? Maybe just a word or two. Please. Um, I've said this to some of you before, and um, I was doubtful when we started this that we would be able to announce before the end of school this year that we had a superintendent in place and I was sure that we were going to go the interim route. And I am so pleased to say that District Wise guided us well, and that Dr. Bossert is here with us tonight, and that I have the utmost faith that he will be a wonderful leader for the students, the staff, and the community of Great Neck, and welcome. Mr. Talk? Well, I'll echo almost everything that Ms. Perez just said. At the beginning of this process, I, I too sort of, in my own way, I like to set expectations low and exceed them. So in my own mind, I, I believe that we would go the interim route. And anyone who met me along the way, particularly at the beginning parts of this journey, I would always say, well, you know, we'll see how it goes. I think we, we should just expect there to be an interim, and we'll see how the process plays out. And so um, you know, I'm, I'm very happy to say that after a, really thankful to, to District Wise for putting together the, the search that they did, um, and after countless meetings, both with District Wise, my colleagues, Dr. Bossert, and other candidates, um, I too, like my colleague Ms. Perez, feel that we are stepping forward with the best possible candidate. And I am uh, looking forward to the next five years with you, Dr. Bossert. So I wish you the very best of good fortune, good health, and I look forward to sharing very many um, memorable experiences with you. Mrs. I'd like Berkowitz. to save my comments for after. That's fine. Mr. Shi, would you have anything else to add? Uh, <clears throat> wow. Um, welcome, Dr. Bassa. Um, and uh, I think we made the right decisions. Um, 
and uh, during the interview process, you pretty much nailed every landing, so to speak, um, and uh, we appreciate that. And we, I wish you, uh, you know, um, unlimited success. And I still have a daughter in the high school, and uh, I'm looking forward to be a parent under your leadership. And Dr. Bostert, what I will add is that I'm so glad that tonight you chose to be here with us to see so many of the constituent parts of our community, to observe the high standards and the high expectations that we have across the board here in Great Neck already. And I'm confident that you will help to maintain and amplify those standards for the parent community, for the student community, for our professionals, our entire staff, and for the benefit of all. And so for that reason, I too am very happy for you and eager to see where you will lead Great Neck in the future. And so now I will ask for the vote on the resolution as already read and seconded. All in favor? It is unanimous. Congratulations, Dr. Basser. <laughs> Dr. Bossert, would you like to say anything? Yes, and, and thank you so much for the opportunity to do so. Um, by way of observation, this is not the first time I've cleared a room. Um, <laughs> I'm accustomed to that. Um, and thank you, Mr. O'Keefe, for the microphone and providing it to me in future meetings. That may be an action that you regret. Um, I've, I've been known to uh, need to economize my words from time to time. Uh, but I can't tell you how humbled I am at the remarks you've made, how thankful I am for this opportunity. I too want to thank our associates from District Wise because I need to be candid with the board and community as I've been since we first met. I was not looking for a new position. I was not searching for a job. Um, I was in a place where we were meeting with a high level of success and I was enjoying every moment of it. So when our folks from District Wise called and asked if I'd be interested in a new opportunity, my immediate response was likely not. Um, and then it was shared with me that the opportunity was here. And knowing the standing of this institution in the educational community, I could not um, pass up the opportunity to become part of this team. Great Neck is known and respected throughout the state, throughout the nation, as a leader in education. And the opportunity to not only to help lead the team, but just be a part of it, and to collaborate with the talented group that I know is here, making certain our students have the opportunities that they do, and the diverse offerings that exist, and the resources that we're able to provide I, I couldn't pass on that opportunity. And I'm so thankful to the Board of Education for taking the time to meet with me. And I will share with the community that our, our final meeting um, was scheduled to be about two hours. And I think it went about three and a half. Um, and when asked by my wife, Melissa, who was here, you know, Melissa said, how did it go? And I said, I have to be candid. It didn't feel like an interview. It felt like a collegial discussion. It felt more as we had planned a retreat so we can learn from one another to collaborate together. And I look forward to continuing that work. Um, Mr. Shee, Mrs. Berkowitz, I know you have other plans to serve the community in a different capacity, but I thank you so much for helping to provide this opportunity to me to, con to serve the community in this capacity, and I thank you for that. You know, I, I do regret, I do regret that I will not have the opportunity to work on the smooth transition with Dr. Prendergast. I knew Teresa. We worked together at the state level, and she was a person of the highest character. And I have to compliment you and your community tonight, because I cannot think of a better way to celebrate her legacy. When I listened to the reports from the shared decision-making teams and heard about the diverse creativity that's happening with our students, the outreach with the community, the partnerships that exist, and the creative things taking place in the buildings, that's part of her legacy. When I heard the tenure recommendations that the principal shared about teachers that she helped to recruit, 
That is the single greatest and most important action we take as administrators, is putting the right people in the classrooms with the students and making sure they have the resources to be successful. And it's clear to me from the reports that were offered by the administration that that's what those teachers are doing. And I'm certain there are hundreds more of them that we'll look forward to celebrating in the coming days and years. There's a, an expression um, that I use frequently. I adopted it some time ago. It's, it's the race for excellence has no finish line. And that's what I see as my role coming to Great Neck. Um, the race for excellence has no finish line. There is always room for improvement. There is always opportunity to go to greater heights and meet challenges. But in that race, I can tell you that Great Neck is well ahead of the pack, and I am humbled to join the team. And I thank you for the opportunity. Welcome, Dr. Bossert. At this time, I think that Mrs. Berkowitz has asked for her opportunity to address Dr. Bossert and the community. Thank you, Mrs. Sassouni. Since I made my announcement back in February about stepping down at the end of the school year, so much has happened. Thank you to Dr. Bossert for recognizing that Great Nick is a community in mourning at the sudden passing of Dr. Prendergast. Dr. Prendergast was a leader who exuded warmth, kindness, and integrity, and will be missed. Please understand that our sadness in no way diminishes our enthusiasm and optimism felt about your appointment to Great Neck this evening. Welcome tonight to both Dr. Bossert and Mrs. Bossert because you were part of this family now as well. I'm truly sorry that I won't get a chance to work with you. When I announced in February that I'd be stepping down off the board, much like the goals we've heard about from our school's shared decision-making committees, I too had set two goals for myself that I hoped the board could accomplish before I left. One, to settle contract negotiations with our excellent teachers, ensuring a better future for our present and future staff, which was completed last month. And then number two, having been a part of this process three times before, to play a role in finding our next educational leader, a visionary who could come to Great Neck this summer, ensuring continuity of leadership upon Dr. Prendergast's retirement. While no one could have foreseen the tragic turn of recent events, and despite our immense sadness, we owed it to our staff, our students, and our parents to push forward with this necessary timetable that's before us this evening. And as these two goals I mentioned have both been accomplished through much hard work and many, many meetings this year, Tonight, for several personal reasons, will be, as I stated in February, my last board meeting. And next week, as I attend our high school graduations, I too will become a member of the class of 2023. It has been my honor to have been involved with our schools in a leadership capacity since 1986, and to have served on the Board of Education as a trustee, vice president, and president for the past 31 years. But all good things must come to an end, and the time has come to step down now. I remain committed to both the school and Great Neck community that I have loved since moving here in 1978, and I look forward to seeing what the future has in store for us all. I wish you all the very best, and I thank you all for your caring and friendship. Thank you.
purple. <laughs> there is nothing, there is no physical object that can ever suffice for 31 years of service, period. So there's nothing that Great Neck or this board can do, Barbara, to acknowledge your 31 years more than we can do than to say thank you. Thank you. But this is wrapped in purple. <laughs> 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 and on behalf of the New York State School Boards Association, please accept this certificate, which I'm sure is one of many that you've received over these many years. Acknowledging 30, this is 32 years, so they gave you a bonus. <laughs> Don't know why that happened, but it says 32 years. But I am leaving. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is not my typo, I right. promise. It says 32 years of service to the Great Neck Union Free School District. I think it's referring to the time period of election. I think this should be modified. <laughs> um, with distinction and honor, your legacy will provide educational opportunities for generations of students in the Great Neck community, and it's dated June 2023. Thank you, Thank Barbara you. Berkowitz. Thank you. For many, many years. Thank you, Rebecca. <laughs> Thank you all. Mrs. Berkowitz, um, if you don't mind, we have some other things to say. Mrs. Perez. So I knew Barbara Berkowitz around the town for a long time, <laughs> but I didn't really know Barbara Berkowitz until I got on the board. And she had called me and said, it, it's just a little extra reading. <laughs> really, it's not much. You have nothing to do. You just retired. And, and it would really help us fill the position. <laughs> being, being a person who loves to have punishment put on themselves, I said yes. But um, one of the first chores that I got when I got onto, policy, onto the board was to fill the open, open seat on the policy committee. <laughs> it's an honorary chore. How's that? <laughs> um, the first thing that I learned was that I had to wear purple to every <laughs> policy meeting because there was something about the alliteration of purple, purple policy. policy. I did not own a... <laughs> I wear usually blue or black. Today I'm in red. But I had to find a wardrobe of purple things because I got chastised for not wearing. And if it was not really purple, Real purple. You, you were in trouble. Um, but sitting through those meetings, I learned, I thought I knew a lot about the history of Great Neck because of my own experiences here. But I learned about parts of Great Neck School District that I didn't know through sitting through those policy committee meetings. I learned how to shop on QVC. <laughs> I learned how to order food online. <laughs> how to wrap I, gifts. I learned how to wrap gifts, <laughs> um, how to just get bags that tied up. So um, for Barbara, in all the accolades that she has gotten in terms of her leadership of the district, she also taught us all a lot of other things. It actually was something that Teresa and I would sit at policy with Barbara and we'd say, where did you get that? And we would be writing notes <laughs> on what, what online place to go to to order something that Barbara had brought in to share with us. So Barbara, for all the things you've done for Great Neck as a school district and all the things you taught me about shopping, <laughs> I thank you for your service and your love for the schools of Great Neck. Thank you. Can I say something? Mr. Shi. Well, for all the conversation and shopping tips that Barbara gave Ms. Perez, I'm just wondering what, what kind of shoes you wear. Um, <laughs> 
it's, it's, just, it's just amazing you uh, been doing this for 31 years and I've been doing it for six years. I can't find the right shoes for it. But, <laughs> but, but more, more, more importantly, more importantly, uh, Ms. Berkowitz, I really thank you and your family for giving Green Egg the 31 years of dedicated service. It is not easy and we are lucky. And uh, I hope you have happy uh, retirement. And don't forget our Peking duck, duck dinner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Mr. Tak. Well, I had a little more checkered experience with Barbara <laughs> before I got on the Board of Education. <laughs> Some people might know um, I was part of the UPTC for many years before joining the Board of Education, and I ran the Budget Committee. And um, or for many years, I ran the budget committee. And for many years, Barbara and I would butt heads. <laughs> even if it wasn't directly, it might have even been right. indirectly through right. other people. Right. And um, you know, so I didn't know what kind of reception I was going to get when I when I came onto the board of education. And I would say uh, I've been here for two years, and I can't thank you enough for the grace with which you handled uh, handled it and uh, your willingness to educate me, just as you mm -hmm. educated. Ms. Perez and Mr. Shi, I'm sure Ms. Sassuni at some point. Um, it's been invaluable for me because no matter how much experience I had had in the UPCC, it was more than just a little reading. <laughs> and um, um, for that, I'm very thankful. And I will miss having to move my chair um, back so people can see you. Um, I am extremely grateful for the for the years of service I think as mr. she said you can't possibly under I can't possibly understand what what 31 years is let alone two you know I haven't done it for two years um, our community has been very fortunate uh, we will definitely miss you and um, I probably will be calling you across time um, and I wish you the very best of luck in your future thank you thank you so much. I am so happy to turn the mic over to the Policy Committee, which is chaired ably by Mrs. Perez and her co-chair, Mr. Xi, items 7B and C. Thank you. Um, I just want you to all know it's going to be a very quick policy report tonight. But <laughs> speaking, speaking of policy, thanks, Joe. Speaking of policy, <laughs> excuse me. Thanks, Dr. Hickey. Um, <laughs> Speaking of policy, I would be remiss if I didn't take just a second to talk about my partner in crime here, Jeff Shee, because we didn't know each other at all when we started, when he came to this committee. Um, I, I met him in this room the first time, and we were sitting, <laughs> the board was sitting up here at the committee, oh, no. at the table, and um, I think I was the last one that met Jeff before he sat down in a group of people. And at one point, um, Nathan <laughs> Fong, who brought him here to meet possible constituents, introduced Jeff to get up and speak. And he spoke eloquently, and then he turned around. And I guess I was the last name you remembered, because <laughs> he said, right, Donna? And I went, uh because I really wasn't paying close attention. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to say right to. But over, over the years, through our work together on policy, we have become friends and shared lots of family events and, and talk and banana pudding from Magnolia Bakery. And um, Jeff has offered so many insightful uh, points to our discussion on policies, things that I would not have thought of, uh, nor Teresa at the time, and made us really a very well-working committee that has been very successful. I thank you for your work and your friendship. Thank you. Okay, on that note, I have one policy 
for a one-time reading and possible adoption this evening. Policy 5150 is revised. School admissions, one reading and adoption. The revision addresses the inclusion of the District Office of Registration as the contact point for parents, persons, and parental relations who seek to request continued registration without payment of tuition in circumstances where the family has moved out of the district after February 1st of a student's senior year or May 1st for students in grades K through 11. In accordance with policy 2400, board policy development, this revised policy is being submitted for one reading and adoption. The proposed effective date of this policy revision is July 1st, 2023. Do I hear a motion to accept? So moved. Second? Second. Are there any questions or comments? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. The next three policies, I believe, are all up for a third reading, and therefore no discussion is necessary. There has been no change since the last meeting. All those in favor? Oh, do I hear a motion to accept? Sorry. So moved. Oh, second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. I was so excited that it was so short that I almost <laughs> forgot the process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Perez. The next item on the agenda is 7D, the acceptance of some donations uh, made to uh, some student scholarships. Uh, is there a motion in favor of accepting the donations? So move. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you to the donors. The motion carries. The next items we'll do on consent, items 8 through 11. Is there a motion in favor of uh, items 8 through 11 being accepted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The motion carries. We are now up to item 12 on the agenda, which is open time. And as usual, I would just remind anyone who wishes to speak that we have a three-minute limit in the interest of fairness. And so far, there are two yellow cards. If anyone else wishes to speak, please fill in a yellow card. The first speaker is Michael Glickman um, on becoming UPTC president. Congratulations. Thank you. Great Neck is at a true inflection point and living through a disruptive change. We note that what we all do now will matter more than at any other point in the last 20 years. For us, this is both a time to reflect and remember a person who committed her whole self to this district, while also celebrating the tenure of Jeff Shi, who will soon conclude his board service, and an opportunity to welcome Joanne Chan, for who we offer our full support. We also recognize Barbara Berkowitz for her 30 years of service, and we say Godspeed. We would be remiss if we did not thank those who committed themselves who served before us. Our sincere thanks to Rachel Dopelt, Matt Jagoda, and Moji Pomerati, alongside the many others whose sense of obligation to the betterment of our public schools is ever present. It is our intention that the UPTC will enhance its work in support of the various needs of the PTAs and PTOs across the entire peninsula, serve as a convener of important conversations, and elevate the voices, concerns, and opinions of parents district-wide, efforts that are vital to the continued success of our schools. We look forward to working with the administration to improve district communication and to create new opportunities to coalesce around this community's shared values. Andy and I are delighted that for the first time, the UPTC will be led by two fathers with a district-wide perspective. And we take that responsibility quite seriously. We assume this role with eyes wide open, understanding that our district must collectively wrestle with the big questions of our time. 
and we are grateful for the leadership team that has been installed as the incoming UPTC Executive Board. As we continue to mourn the loss of Dr. Prendergast, let us also reaffirm our gratitude for her years of service. May her memory be a blessing. Let me close by saying that we believe passionately in the capacity of Great Neck Public Schools. We fully support the leadership of Rebecca Sassuni to guide this district from strength to strength. And we are encouraged by the forthcoming changes to the makeup of the Board of Education. And we look forward to welcoming and working closely with you, Dr. Bossert. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next card is from Andrew Lawfer, co-president of the UPTC. Hello. I don't know how I'm going to follow that up. That was very well done by my uh, co-president here, Michael Glickman. Um, again, um, I want to echo uh, his sentiments regarding Dr. Pendergrass. Um, it was a, a tremendous loss. And a uh, short story um, uh, regarding um, her um, you know, we were when we were having a little trans, transition uh, when she first came on. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Richard Braverman, he was the former um, uh, superintendent, I think, of Hewlett Woodmere. And I was talking to him about, you know, Dr. Pendergrass coming on, and he said, "Oh, you're so lucky. She's a, she's an amazing woman. She's going to do a phenomenal job." And I and I was like, "Great, that's awesome. That really you know put things at ease because I know there was a lot of uncertainty then." Um, so that just kind of exemplifies exactly how much we just lost. But we are also gaining a, a brand new superintendent who really, just that you know, first speaking with him a few moments ago uh, really is very impressive. And I think the board did an excellent, excellent job in choosing him. And thank you for accepting. You know, thank you for my, my kids uh, too. Um, I'm a civil rights attorney. So my job primarily is speaking truth to power on a daily basis. As um, co-president of uh, the UPTC with my good friend here, Michael Glickman, uh, you know, I'm gonna be do, doing something similar, a little, a little more tangent to that. I'll be speaking truth to mischaracterizations and falsehoods that not only pervade at times our community, but also our country in general. Um, you know, we constantly battle, you know, between ignorance and knowledge between false bravado and empathy and understanding, and uh, women's healthcare choices versus oppression. These are a number of things that we're dealing with, and I think these are a number of things that our kids will be dealing with as well, and they need to be addressed in an appropriate manner. That being said, it's my intention to confront these types of issues in our community in a healthy and controlled way so we can progress past them and benefit our kids as a whole. Uh, I look forward to working with my co-president and, and the community. And um, I want to thank everyone for their service, Ms. Berkowitz, for your I mean, three decades. That's, that's incredible. Um, really, really incredible. Thank you for that. And Mr. Shi, thank you too. And uh, again, thank you for the, for the opportunity, for taking your chance on me and Mr. Glickman. You won't be disappointed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other speakers who wish to address the board at this time? Okay. We are up to board discussion, item 13. Mr. Shi. All right, this is my last chance to speak, but <laughs> I'm not going to waste it. Um, this is probably also the last public meeting that uh, Ms. Newman going to spend with us, and she has been serving Great Neck School District as Assistant Superintendent of uh, Elementary Instructions. And uh, she's helping us getting a lot of grants, uh, so we have more money to support our students. So <laughs> I really want to take this opportunity, thank Ms. Newman for, for her dedicated service in our school district.
Mrs. Berkowitz. I guess this is my last word as well here. Um, it's been quite an adventure for over 30 years. I've worked with four different superintendents, missing a chance at the fifth, but very excited for this community, having the opportunity to have you at the helm. Um, I've worked with a dozen different board trustees, and I'm so grateful to have had the chance to do what I've done now for over three decades, because the work that we do in this district, and that all of you do as well, because I'm looking around and everybody here plays a role in the success of our district. We are so fortunate, we're fortunate for our administrators, we're fortunate about our teachers, we're fortunate that our parents are as involved as they are, and that really is what makes Great Nick great. I'm very proud of this school community, always have been, and I'm so thankful to have played a little part in what has been successful here in this district, and I thank all of you for your support through the years because we really have had this as a team effort. We speak so often about family, and it's like a family, sometimes dysfunctional, <laughs> most of the time getting along very well, but we never lose sight of what's most important, and that's that children leave this district better than when they come in. They've learned more, they're more social, they're kind beings, and it's thanks to all of you. And I thank you as parents for entrusting these schools. And I thank you as administrators, teachers, leaders, for the work that you do every day, day in and day out, whether it was through COVID or whether it's through all of the tragedies that we've encountered nationwide, you've always remained strong and provided our children with a safe learning environment. And I thank all of you. It's all yours. No, I, no I it's like all you. ours. Uh, uh, Mr. Tak, go ahead. I didn't get a chance to um, say goodbye to my friend, Mr. Shi. Um, so I just wanted to take two minutes and say, um, I really wish you the very best of good luck. I remember meeting you in 2017, and, um, and, I, and I'm here to say that the community was very fortunate that in 2017 you stepped forward. And I got to witness that firsthand over the last two years uh, in the boardroom. I think Ms. Perez was absolutely correct. At, at very critical moments, you offer very ins incisive and insightful, um, or you, you lend insightful opinions, which help shed light on what the ultimate decisions are that we're, that we're making. And um, I'm definitely going to miss your, um, your, soft, your soft but um, forceful leadership. Um, and um, as I said, I think the community was very fortunate that you stepped forward in 2017 and I'll miss, miss your presence on the board. And to Ms. Newman, um, I just wanted to wish you the very best of good luck uh, and good fortune in your retirement. It's hard, uh, it's definitely earned, and um, I just hope it's everything that you hope it is. I really don't know what to say other than I couldn't be prouder of this community than I am this evening in every way. And I, I have to imagine that you are too. And, um, and I hope that we can carry that forward for, this, for each of you to take that forward into the summer and into your lives that you should be proud of where you work 
and of the children and the families and um, that we can all just be proud of the Great Neck Public Schools. Um, and it's my great pride to work with all of you here um, at the Steus, and I will be sorry that we will not be together at board meetings, but I am sure that we will continue to be in conversation, Jeff and Barbara and Grant and Donna, get some rest. I'm sure and Dr. We'll have, Lando, I'm sure, thank you. I'm sure we're gonna have board meetings before they leave. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I would do with my evenings. <laughs> I hope that we can carry forward this sense of pride and joy. <laughs> if there's a motion, it would be appreciated. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs>